Hello everyone, it's Dmitry Anoshan and Surfalytics. Uh, this is uh, module 2 where we talk about databases and SQL. And today's lesson is about data models in databases. Data models is an important topic for data engineers, for analytics engineers, even for data analysts, because basically this is the map of the data that is available in your database. If you know how to use the data models, it means you can quickly find the tables, the relationship between tables and databases, and there is more than just information and documentations. The data models typically can be utilized for design of database and if you have some business processes and you go to design the data warehouse, then you can convert your business process into data models. Today we'll go through this process, we'll touch some basic fundamental things that are very important for the interview. For most of the interview, especially for data engineer or analytics engineer, you might hear many questions related to the database and data modeling. Of course, we will learn more about this during the Model 4, then we will talk about data integrations in ETL and down the road on the Model 6, uh, then we will talk about cloud data warehouses. But for now, our primary goal is just to briefly understand what's data models, what's the key source of information and what we can do about this. Also for hands-on, I will show you a couple tools that you can use to quickly build the data models. What is the data model? The data model is abstract model that organizes elements of data and standardize how they relate to one another and to the properties of real world entities. By real world entities, I mean the actual business process. For example, if you work in the organizations, an organization has sales process or the marketing team. Obviously, they have some entities, like they have the customer, they have the product, maybe a mobile application, web store, online store, retail store, those kinds of entities and they have different attributes. Then we want to convert this business process into databases world, we would like to utilize data modeling. And this is just example of the relational data model. In particular, this is the FAC internet sales. This is coming from sample sales uh, data warehouse uh, or database in Microsoft SQL Server. Every time we install Microsoft SQL Server, we can get this database, sample database. And FAC Internet Sales is one of them. In this particular examples, this is Star Schema. We'll learn what's a Star Schema and what's Snowflake. And this is physical data model. We also learn the types of data models. What else here? We can see the primary key. We can see the foreign key. These are two important things. The, the theory of databases is quite big, but for work in data analytics field, you don't need all of it. You just need the bare minimum. And for example, primary key, foreign key, surrogate key, nature key. Those are important concepts. I will cover what are they. Dimensional modeling is important. Fact table, dimension table also is important. And some other concepts that we'll cover in this lesson. Probably nowadays it's clear that data model in data science or machine learning world is different from the data model in databases. In our particular example, we talk about data models or entity relationship diagram. There we can visualize our tables and the structure for each tables, the columns. And if you will think about spreadsheet world, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, this is just could be if we look to dim customer, you can imagine the spreadsheet, uh, the top name dim customer, and you have just three columns with interest information: customer key, geographic key, customer alternate key. So there's three columns that fill with some kind of information, and then you have another tab in this display the same workbook. For example, dim currency or fucking trend sales with the columns, and then this is how you define the relationship. You even can mimic exactly the same example or any kind of example of databases in spreadsheet. That's why we started even model one using the spreadsheet. Is data model a difficult? The data modeling itself without uh, attach to the business process is not difficult at all. However, the most complicated thing is to transform your business process logic into data model into data warehouse. And this is quite complicated. There are existing techniques and the patterns how you can do this. And I want to highlight several of them. One of the most popular nowadays is uh, dimensional modeling. And the author of dimensional modeling is Ralph Kimball. Uh, he is one of the father of data warehouse. 
here's the most popular book, the Data Warehouse Toolkit. There are a bunch of other books. So in these books, you will talk about dimensional modeling, about conform dimensions, and some other aspects of building Data Warehouse based on the real world examples from different industries. Alternative for this or another father of Data Warehouse is Bill Inman. His book, Building uh, the Data Warehouse, and actually there are in other books and articles from this gentleman. His main idea is third normal form. Uh, despite the fact that dimensional modeling is a kind of look to the way how you can build a kind of data mart. If you never heard the word data mart, it's actually not that complicated. If databases, and you have different schemas, uh, different tables. So data mart, you can think about is the logical area in your data warehouse or database. For example, it could be just a schema dedicated, for example, for marketing analytics. This example of um, data model, it could be data mart related to fuck internet sales. It's just a logical term. You, you shouldn't care about this. And even dimension modeling means you're going to build some kind of uh, dimensional model with fact table, dimension tables. Frequently, it might work uh, with a uh, third normal form. We build Inman so it can like mix together. The alternative to those two traditional approaches, there is exist notion of data modeling data vault built uh, and invented by Daniel Lindstedt. So this is very particular way of building data models. We'll talk more about this. Works well with um, Snowflake Data Warehouse, some other databases, there is definitely adapts exist for this. It really depends on the organizations, what their goal, do they want to really replicate the business model? Do they want to make it scalable? Or the companies like I used to work in Amazon, the primary goal was not to build the proper data model, but deliver the value as fast as possible. Then you probably will use shortcuts to build your fact tables and hook the metrics into dashboards. This is example of how it might look as an entity relation diagram. Dimensional model looks very simple. You usually have the fact table and dimension table is around. The third normal form, it means it's coming from database theory. Then you have database uh, normal form starting from normal form one, normal form two, three, and so on. The third normal form means that every table has the primary key and basically you don't have any duplicate. You're trying to normalize your data in other words. And uh, data vault, this is alternative way that you, you use kind of the same design, your data models, but you have hub links and satellites. So satellites is something similar to dimensions. Hubs is the kind of your fact tables and links, the things that connected between hubs and satellites. I might be not very accurate with my description because I never actually built in production this approach. And the book that I just shared, Building Scalable Data Warehouse with Data Wall 2.0, is quite a good book uh, with a real world example based on the SQL Server. If you're interested in this particular approach, you can start. All three methods or, or just one method, it doesn't impact your salary and total compensation. That's why you should consider this wisely where you want to invest your time. I found this picture of comparing uh, those uh, data models together and what's pros and cons. I don't want to spend time reading this. If you want, you can pause and just go briefly and see. One of the most common questions about data modeling, what data modeling techniques you know, what's their pros and cons, and this is a good approach. Another popular data modeling is a white table. It's the idea that you build one huge table, then you don't need to actually split the data into smaller tables, like dimensional factors, just all in one tables. Back in the time, if we look into OLTP, you should know what is online transaction processing systems that usually serve as a backend, and usually all the tables in third normal form. The databases in the past, the hardware, the software was really restricted on capacity and compute. As a result, only way to make it efficient and fast, especially scalable, uh, trying to read the less bytes as possible and store less bytes as possible. As a result, they're trying to split uh, into smaller tables. You know, if you have product names, you don't want to repeat the product name or product descriptions in your fact tables over and over and over. The idea that you want to actually have the dedicated tables with the product descriptions, there you have one description per table. And then you have a correspondent key, like integer or numeric number, there you can look up to another table. So as a result, your, for the storage purpose, for the reading and performance wise, is a really cost efficient solution. Nowadays, if the cloud computing, you can just uh, burn the cache, you get at more compute, you can double size of compute and you don't have the problems. That's why the data 
modeling techniques like white tables pretty common and some extension is pretty useful and simple because the primary goal for data team is actually deliver the business value of course you need to build securable a scalable solution that cost efficient but don't forget like it's between trade-off right how fast you can deliver the value versus how good and cost efficient your solution also be aware of technical depth because if you can quickly and dirty build some kind of solutions over the years you produce lots of technical depth and it's very hard to do anything about this let's compare star and snowflake one of the most popular question to you what's the difference between star and snowflake nowadays and we talk about analytics use cases for analytics engineer i don't for example use tools dbt snowflake or bi tools you really focus on the star schema then you have the simple fact tables and they have one level of joins basically it's their dimensional tables the third normal form is different you have the, your fact tables you have your dimension table in other fact table or bridge table you have more levels of joints that's the difference between snowflake and star and the snowflake is really good really applicable for third normal form in other term that's important to know what's the difference between normalized and denormalized the dimensional modeling and usually the fact tables or we'll talk in the terms of medallion architecture that's very popular nowadays especially in databricks then you build data lake lake house even then you use dbt medallion architecture tells you that your data platform data warehouse data lake should have three layers they should have the bronze layer the silver layer and the gold layer and the bronze layer is usually your raw data then you just replicate as is the silver layer it's your staging layer that you can apply the minimum transformations you can have some joints and the gold layer your fact tables they actually do some aggregation calculations the joints and then you hook the bi tool to your gold layer usually the gold layer is your dimensional models your fact tables your data marts they usually happening in denormalized way this is how it works you you join a bunch of tables because you don't want to have in bi producing a bunch of joins and the query data you just optimize for the query for historical queries and the normalized data is the way to go versus normalized data you have a bunch of tables it's like third normal form where you want well, for example i have table items right i have table for product code i have table for category i can join them together and this is normalized or third normal form it's not just enough just listen to me and then go to interview and answer actually go and try uh, google something try to find exercise that you can build third normal form and then from third normal form to move to denormalize form what is the data mart as i mentioned it's a logical place in uh, your data warehouse in some extension maybe in the past it could be even different uh, physical hardware and database where you can push your data from your core data warehouse in some organizations like amazon and microsoft they let you utilize the central the core data for example microsoft has the core data lake that calls uh, cosmos that size of 20 petabytes and the teams can query the data when i used to work in xbox i have my own data of my gaming title but i didn't have any data about sales from game pass subscription basically revenue based and I need to pick up the data from this uh, general like, core data lake, Cosmos, extract it and load into my data platform. My data platform on one hand is like just normal data platform. It was Delta Lake on Databricks. But on another hand, from Microsoft perspective, this is just the data mark. It's not about size. For me, it just depends. If it is the bigger thing and it depends on the bigger things, it could be just the called data mark. You can completely avoid to use this term if you don't understand what is it. now let's talk about what's different between data warehouse and online transaction processing system during the model one we'll talk about our source layers and usually for backend systems for example for e-commerce and some other application this is transactional database that optimize for insert and the data warehouse is on the other hand is optimized for analytical queries this is another example i assume we have our online store we have Google Analytics for the marketing information. We can track the channels. We can track the users, active users, their session duration, what they do online. If customers place the orders, for example, on the shop.surfalytics.com, they place the order, the order coming in backend database. And then there is ETL process that extract data from Google Analytics and extract data from backend database. Usually it's more about data engineering perspective, but 
you never should grab the data from production backend database. Instead, you should work with a backend team to create your replica of the production database. And there are multiple ways of doing this. You can, for example, create the replica from backup with some delay. You can build the replication process that will replicate the data in near real time. But the idea for ETL tools and any other consumers that not production related to connect to the replica because otherwise it accidentally can break and the performance can degrade. This is uh, everything moving to data warehouse and in my case it's the same Postgres database. And then I'm using uh, BI tools to connect for GDBC or DBC drivers. Now you should know what's GDBC or DBC drivers or I can use Jupyter notebooks to connect the same data. And this is the key difference. Right? OLTP designed to support business transaction support. I mentioned with transactions, it should be very fast, it could be concurrent. Data warehouse designed for decision-making process for analytics. In OLTP, data is volatile and data warehouse not volatile. And obviously, data warehouse holds lots of historical data and gives you opportunity to query this historical data. And often it could be aggregated data. And especially, really good point, we don't want to store any PI, personal and defined data, like customer name, customer credentials, and so on, in data warehouse. Also the size, so you can see some details different. It also could be the question on the interview. What's inside data warehouse? So I mentioned about multiple layers, and those layers, they're more like logical, uh, you can think about. And if you talk about database, we can create multiple databases inside one database, or multiple schemas, multiple catalogs, depends on the product we use. I mentioned about medallion architecture, then we have bronze, silver and gold. And here, just the normal term, I can have staging raw data, and then corporate data model, and then business layer. It could be anything. The layering is a very good term and operation. Basically, then you start to work with anything. Your primary goal, trying to decouple it on the layers and see what's happened each particular layer. It's easy to document. It's easy to maintain and modify. So in our case, we first moving data, basically load data as is to the staging or raw environment. Then we can build corporate data model and then we can build fact tables or dimensional modeling. Very often the middle step is skipped. In case if we would use data world, this example looks like here we move all the data, then we use Inman approach with third normal form and then Kimball with dimensional modeling. Or we can do completely different. We can instead those two, we can maybe we can have this, maybe not, and we can use data world instead. Or maybe we can just from this jump directly to white table approach. What's the design sequence in data warehouse, like in ideal world, in terms of data modeling? Everything starts from conceptual model. Of course, everything starts from understanding the business process. Then you can design your conceptual model. For example, well, the product exists. The product might be, you may sell the product where you sell, you sell in the store and you have the timeline because you sell, sell the product over the time. Then from the conceptual model, you're moving to the logical model. Each of those things is calls the entity. That's why it's entity relationship diagram. And now we have time. We actually can come up with some key columns for the product. We have product descriptions, category, the price, the creator date, the sales information, right? What we want to track and the store ID. From logical model, we can move to the physical model. And the physical model is actual DDL, data definition language, is SQL related, and each different databases has own DDL. This is then you actually going to create your tables and then you start reading the data and the data will, with the help of ETL tools, it's all moving through the tables, splitting, transforming and fill the tables. And then you can connect it to the BI tools. Let's look to our Superstore example. We already work with the file, Superstore sales, right? It has those number of columns and those uh, blue, I use the kind of dimensions and the orange one, the things that we can call metrics or they have quantitative information. What we did, if we want to convert it to kind of like dimensional modeling idea, we, we can split entities like we have customer, shipping, product, geography, and calendar. Then we also have our fact table or the metrics table. There we have the metrics. Here we can add the IDs. Now I have order ID, but we also can have the product ID, the shipping ID, the customer ID, and so on. Let's talk about our example that we just built. This would be our conceptual model. We have sales, your geographical and our shipping product. And then with logical model. Here we highlight where's our primary key and foreign key. 
If you don't know what's the primary key and foreign key, it's uh, important to know. The primary key, it's also coming from database theory, and the primary idea of the primary key that it shows us the unique ID for the column. If we have primary key in the geography table, it means uh, each unique ID will have only single value per table. For example, in geography ID, we have cities, state, region, postal code. It means this is all the unique records. A number of rows in this table, select count star from this table, will be the same as select count uh, geo ID. That's the primary key. And then we work with ETL to avoid duplicates. It's very important for us to know the unique ID for each table, because in this case we can track the duplicates. The duplicates, it's probably one of the most common issue. It's very simple to prevent from this issue, but if you don't have any testing for the unique ID for duplicates, it's very easy to mess up. Imagine you have revenue and because of duplicates you have 50% more sales than you actually have. That's why uniqueness test is very important. And one of the video I already replied online to one of subscriber about data quality framework and tests that we need to go and what's important. This knowledge will be very helpful for you. This is our logical model. And the next step, our physical model, then assuming I, I want to deploy it in the Postgres and then I can highlight uh, the type of each column. If I will use the proper tool, because there are a bunch of tools for data modeling. For this example, I use the SQL DBM. I will show you what is SQL DBM and it works with many different databases. It supports reverse engineering, then we can read database and actually pull all DDL and build the models for documentations, or we can create the model and then deploy uh, the tables into database. And you can see this example of DDL, data definition language. For you, the most important the SQL or SQL is a data query language. Your select statements that already what we covered. And I hope you practice your SQL every day because 95% of interviews, you will have uh, SQL exercises where you need to prove your knowledge of the SQL. It's also probably the most important skill in the data analytics nowadays. This example, it, SQL DBM creates the SQL for the Postgres, and uh, this has built uh, some tables. The question, when do you need to use data models? Obviously, if you have very complex business process, and it's not easy for you to reflect this process in data warehouse. In a big organization like insurance, e-commerce, bank, there is exist corporate business models. And for example, when I used to work in Teradata, one of the products Teradata sells to their customers is an industry data model. For banking, they already have the data models that works for US market, for European market. The same for healthcare, the same for manufacture, and so on and so on. The performance, uh, in the past, it was very critical nowadays. With the cloud computing, probably can compensate your performance with the cost. Data model allows us to manipulate business entities like Lego bricks. That's the key idea. Work as a team, coordinate changes, document, and so on. That's probably the primary benefit. But the challenge here, how you can bring the data modeling tool into your organizations and how to let everyone to use it daily. Because where so many different tools exist, like data catalog, data governance tools, data modeling tools, DPT itself is doing many things. And very often those tools compete each other. It's more about data governance and who will manage policy about how the team is working. That's it for this model. Now we'll look a couple tools. The first one I want to show you, I found this in the Beaver, our data structure diagrams. This uh, blog post, it's talking about our data structure diagrams, what we can do and how it works. I have in my DBiver, so here I can create the new entity relation diagram. Somewhere we can create entity relation diagram. And um, I create one already. I drag and drop the tables here, and then I can define the joints for them. This is not that helpful. It's probably more serve as a documentation. I want, for example, make the screenshot at the Confluence page or maybe as I'm business analyst or system analyst, I want to create some kind of requirements, or I want to show design of data warehouse to bring to the meeting and, and discuss. This is one way of doing this. Another thing that I want to show you, this is an interesting product. It's uh, let us use the JSON and we can type it. It was developed by Holistics. Holistics is known for one of BI tools as a code. And then we come up with this idea 
Oh, they're starting selling it for the money. It was only free in the past. But the idea here, we can change, we can use this code to create our data models. Obviously, we can probably integrate it with Git. And this is the way of doing this. There is another tool that calls Mermaid, and this is diagram uh, tools. It may also be working with creating some kind of diagrams. I don't know, does it support? It can create the simple, like, logical diagram, but I don't know, will it support or not the database? Oh, it's actually support. Yeah, you can see this is example that also, and the beauty of this, that it can be integrated with uh, GitHub. Another thing that we want to look here is a Lucid. Lucid often uh, is one of the tools to produce you the diagrams. And uh, of course, it's, it's more like mirror where you can as a team built and designed collaboratively on something, but it has the way to build diagrams, but I tried in the past. In my case, I didn't connect to the database, can create the tables, but it takes time to produce them. So the Erwin probably one of the most older tool that exists for data modeling. And it's like probably the father of all data modeling. It's like enterprise tool. You can see that you can do many, many things. License pretty expensive. Yeah, that's expensive tool. I know some organizations that use those tools and even the organizations that implemented a data governance framework and use those tools, they really, really care about data modeling and all changes to the database is coming through those tools. So you're not allowed to add a new column without changing your model. First, you will change your model. Then you review the changes to the model with the people who are responsible for this, like architects, data modelers and only then you actually will deploy the change. And this is the quite good book. I read it when I first came to Canada in 2015, probably the first book I bought because I work in an insurance company. We use this tool and this really good book. It's pretty big. The first half of the book is more about theory behind the data modeling. You're starting to design data model for the ice cream shop and then you from conceptual to logical to the physical one and then of course you obviously using Erwin to build this model. The book is nice because you can use their approach but try any other tools. The SQL DBM that I mentioned they probably are the leader leaders of the cloud data modeling. They good and they partnering with many tools like Snowflake and they give lots of flexibility and the power for the users to collaborate on design of data modeling. And they also have SQL DBM Academy. This is really nice thing. It's Academy of Data Modeling. So they're trying to take leadership on teaching on the data modeling. Definitely worth to come and check data modeling fundamentals with Kate Bellinger. This will give you some ideas and especially will help you to cover and clear out some questions during the data analytics interviews. That's it what I want to show you. But the very last thing what I want to mention is the white white table data modeling. It calls one big table. Oh, it called also white facts, right? So this definitely the term that worth time to check. And there are so many different information about star schema with some other approaches. Do you have any pictures? This is star schema. This is snowflake schema, obviously. Oh, there is galaxy schema. That's something new. And okay, this example of Microsoft uh, sample store, Northwind. This is how they show you how they go through and build the star schema. And this is the white table. So you see, they, they basically just built one huge table that have all the columns. Here are they considering the trade-offs and the white tables 25-50% faster than the uh, star schema in Redshift, BigQuery and Snowflake. Yeah, that's the power of compute. Then it's actually don't really need to do those things uh, like joins because joins might create the shuffling uh, joint data moving from one table to another between the nodes. Let's check the where is the coming the star schema modeling star schema is one big table. That's very good considerations for the modern data engineer or analytics engineer, or even for data analysts. Even as a data analyst, you, do, you don't directly design the tables. You don't directly build the data models. You should be aware of organizations using any tools. You should be 
aware how to read the data models diagram and what methods exist. Maybe you can discuss pros and cons during the interview. This is my trick and tip for you during the interview. It's a really good topic to discuss with hiring manager or other engineers, different industry-wide topic. For example, dimensional modeling versus one big table, data world. Or maybe using of one tool over another tool. Maybe using Spark over Trina, Snowflake over Redshift and BigQuery. Those topics, they're not complicated, but they show you that you're curious about technology, that you're trying to catch up with the market trends, and you're probably not a bad engineer if you ask those questions, you're able to discuss and collaborate. I think that's it what I want to tell you, and the next lesson will be about databases in the cloud. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.